Good evening, this is Ronald Allen, managing change through effective communications. And because I'm able to get home a little earlier than usual, today I decided to come out to my one of my most favorite places, White Bog's Blueberry Farm in sunny New Jersey. And I can say that because as you can see, the sun is to my right setting now. And I have probably another two and a half hours, which I certainly will not spend all the time on live chat. <laughs> but I wanted to talk with you about the family and you. What do I mean by the family and you? You know, in business, they say that, and the mantra is, we are your family. We want to treat you as family. Sometimes, and unfortunately, that is not the best example, not the best uh, reason to be endeared. Family, as I have seen, can mean many things to very different people. If you find yourself in a very traumatic environment, family can be the people around you that you initially do not know, do not know anything about, and yet will come to depend on and respect. So I want to share with you tonight some ideas and perspectives that I have learned along the way that perhaps you can use to address your needs, your desire for the term family, and instead of thinking just by blood, rather by interests, by manner of support, by cultivating nourishing relationships, and that can come from many places. I'd like you to hear a moment exactly where I am, and you'll realize that there's a lot of chatter with this family. As you can hear, the birds, I think they're Bostons, they're red with some yellow uh, coloration to their feathers. I'm not sure the actual names, but my wife tells me that they're Boston something. And they're chattering away because I am probably disturbing them, and now they've gone silent. Or just a little bit silent. They are a family. And as much as they hunt alone, whoops, there they've gone. One or two have decided to stay. As much as they do tend to hunt for food alone, they do enjoy uh, the camaraderie as you just heard. Well, they may come from different groups. They may come from different geographical areas. And so too with humans. We come from different nationalities, come from different cult countries. Within those countries, there are regions. Those regions are perhaps regional in the sense of groups, tribes, which interestingly enough, um, in Europe we've kind of forgotten that term. They were tribes at once, and they even are today just redefined. The relationships that we form are typically around the interests we have. Those interests can be varied. Could it be um, a, a sport that you enjoy? Could it be an interest of reading a particular genre? Plays, music, types of music, the instruments, electrical, acoustical, could it be even just walking in a beautiful panacea like this out on White Bog's Blueberry Farm? Family is donated by the interest, not just in terms of a label. Many people say they come from a certain tribe, they come from a certain family, a dynamic. It is the interest of the family that makes it supportive. 
that makes it, I want to stay. And in many cases, that interest can be spoilt because people try to take advantage of one another. As I mentioned when I started this discussion, in business, if you use the word family too quickly, then you may find that certain interests do not continue. Certain relationships are not as solidified or even wanting to continue uh, a conversation. I've seen it in a few places where the wrong term, the wrong meaning, can basically scuttle an otherwise nourishing environment and certainly a relationship. So when we talk about family, are we being aware to understand that other person's perspective of what family really means? Are we aware of ourselves in terms of how our meaning has been developed? Do we long for a different type of family? You know, they have sororities and fraternities, special organizations and groups, and they are formed because of an interest. We call, well, in some cases, generation gaps. I think that's a fallacy. I think it is an interest gap because people will come together for all manner of reasons. We have the horse racing down the road. We have car racing just at two hours down in Delaware. Professional racing, drag racing. And you'll see all kinds of age groups coming together as a family to watch and participate, learn, engage with one another, get different perspectives. That to me is family. When you have good times, that certainly is much easier, although I will say, again, the sensitivity, the need to communicate effectively to confirm that this is an ongoing process that we wish to engage in, that we wish to be part of, should be made. An earnest attempt should be made, even though we may be comfortable in our space. It is when things get rough, that's when we realize that um, much of what we think of, much of what we assume, is not only inaccurate, it's assumptive to the point of being an insult. And what do I mean by that? Just because you're part of an organization, it doesn't mean you believe in all the tenets of that organization. It doesn't mean that you don't have the best interest of that family nucleus if you don't agree with everything that the mainstream or group think, as they say, expose to. You have to have your own identity within a group, which today, seemingly, seemingly, again, if you use the terminology that most use, then you're just advocating and supporting and solidifying a perspective that may not be true. You know, they talk about the silent majority have nothing to do with the noisy minority. They go about their life. They enjoy their activities, whether it's from, again, horticulture, flying a plane, traveling, seeing other sites, meeting with other people and playing all sorts of engaging games. And it was a lot of fun. We really enjoy, I really enjoyed it. Haven't played much recently, but I certainly enjoyed it back then. So that was a family for a period of time. Some of the relationships certainly went south. Others just filtered out. And still others, because of life's experiences and the distance, and again, the lack of interest, just fizzled away. So when we think of managing change through effective communications, and we talk about a topic being family, let's be a little bit more broad base in our thinking. Even within the nucleus of a bloodline of family, brothers, sisters, husbands, and wives, I think we should look to nourish the other person's latent interests. 
latent interests that have not been expressed simply because the wrong timing, uh, feeling uncomfortable, feeling insecure to express something that otherwise really wasn't developed, wasn't known, wasn't expressed. I think partners, both in the theological sense, partners as in teams, I think partners as in um, husbands and wives, I think we owe it to ourselves to draw upon the experience of each other, the interests that, again, may lay dormant and look to cultivate those relationships. Because that is the true meaning to me of what family is really all about. It's about identifying an interest that maybe you don't right now have a passion for and yet if you give it a little time as the expression goes it'll grow on you you may then become the advocate you may become the leader of that interest how would that change and adjust and allow you to grow as an individual engage with other people and find fresh meaning when life's challenges come at you. It is truly amazing the resourcefulness of the mind, the willingness to go outside your comfort zone, the desire to really help your partner, however that is defined, can bring about a freshness, a freeness of your own state of mind. When you think you're locked down, when you think there is no way out, when you feel that your boss is just stifling your creative juices, when you feel that perhaps your partner has useful life <laughs> depleted, think of a relationship that you haven't explored. Think of not just interest, a relationship that you haven't explored and begin to cultivate that because one it gives you new meaning to life to the environment you're in two it may just well wake that other person up it may just well give them a fresh perspective for themselves that they needed that they didn't realize they could have benefited from family the meaning of family very broad when you find yourself in difficult times personalities your own personalities your other personalities seek expression let that grow let that flourish don't be afraid of the part of you that has not been given a chance to emerge develop it cultivate it go seek other people who have perhaps gone on that journey it certainly can be in business, absolutely, and it certainly is in our private lives. So why not blend the two, mesh the two, as they say in, in baking, fold the two, and find out for yourself what creative aspirations, capabilities, and discoveries are latently waiting for you under the surface. This is Ronald Allen enjoying one of my favorite places I'll give you another view. Absolutely stunning out here. Absolutely stunning. And, and you might be wondering, what are, why are these basins empty? Well, they drain them in order to set the blueberries and cranberries for the season. And that's what you're seeing here. So enjoy. And remember, when someone tells you that it's family, ask them, what does family mean to you? And you'll see for yourself. Uh, it could actually be right out here in what I call God's creation. This is my temple. This is my Sunday. This is my spiritual immersion. <laughs> and I do truly love it. As cold as it is, I'm glad I can be cold. I'm glad the elements, I can feel the elements. 
This is part of my family. So I hope you'll go forward and find new meaning to what family really is for you and not what some social norm, what your own family or nucleus family may say family is for you. This is Ronald Allen, Managing Change Through Effective Communications. You